Um, rugby saved my life because rugby just gave me like a very clear view of what I really wanted in life, you know. Walking in the street sometimes, I used to like just clap around because I could imagine like a lot of fans around me and uh, rugby just gave me that vision, you know. And uh, like last week in DC, when I was walking around, just clapping, everybody else clapping back. That was like my dream come true, you know, and I, I really loved it. I'm from South Sudan, but I was raised in Kenya. So I moved to Kenya when I was a year old and uh, I lived in Kenya all my life like as a refugee before I moved to America. It's funny because, um, see back home, rugby wasn't that popular yet, you know, when I was a kid. So I used to play soccer and uh, every time, like after 3 p.m. when we're done playing soccer, I used to see these other kids walk in with um, a weird ball and I'm like, what kind of sport is that, you know? But like, it went on for like two weeks and then I was like, oh damn, I'm gonna have to try it, you know? So I went ahead and I was like, oh, can I pass the ball with you guys? They were like, yeah, sure. So I didn't know, so they started like training me a little bit and uh, that was really good. I was 12 years old then. So that's how I got into rugby. Throws that ball back and Akwe, look, he has so some soccer skills as well. Knows that he can't quite get his hands on it. Sticks his foot out and dives over. What a play by Akwe. Back in 2012, when wars broke out in South Sudan, economy crashed like bad, bad. So my dad and mom used to work in South Sudan because refugees are not allowed to work in Kenya. So they were earning like $80 a month. So we could not like survive on that, you know? So I went to the streets, it forced me to like be a street boy. I did that for like a long time, like I think like four years before I like decided to change. But um, throughout those four years, um, a lot happened, you know, cause I'm the big brother, but I had like three girls ahead of me, family of seven. So three girls, then me and my two brothers, and then my little sister. So it was a big family and I had to take care of all of them because my parents were making $80, which wasn't like that much, you know? The life changer came in one day when I got shot, but uh, that wasn't it. I got shot on my knee by a rubber bullet. And the cops started chasing us. It was like at night, I think around 1 a.m. So hit my knee so bad, I felt the patella shake. I was running next to my brother. Um, his name is Gabu. So we're running away from the cops and then I just, I saw him, he was like, everybody down. I, did, I just looked at him. The next thing I know, I just felt my patella shake like that. And then I was on the ground. I got up real quick. I didn't let him catch me. So I made a turn and then made another turn and then hid in a ditch for like an hour. Then when I got up, my knee was swollen like so bad. And I had to walk like 10 miles home because I didn't have money for transport, you know? And uh, it was just like crazy. So went back home, six months, no surgery because there's still no money. Surviving on uh, one meal a day, that was dinner only. And throughout the day, I would send like my siblings to go and play with their friends at their houses so that they can like, you know, have some meal and all that. And I think that was like the life changer now, you know? So I decided, oh, no rugby or soccer. Still, when I got shot, I decided, okay, let me change my life now. And um, I decided, okay, this one meal a day, we're gonna do it for as long as it takes. And the rugby is gonna pay off. And we hope that the economy back home is gonna be better too. The fact that you can hit somebody in rugby, you know, and it's so legal to hit someone. I love that. And uh, it's like quite fun too. In Kenya, if you don't have money, um, soccer won't take you anywhere, you know, because even if you're so good, they'll still pick the kid who goes to the academies, the kids um, whose parents are a bit wealthier. But in rugby, if you're good, you're good. Everybody will see that you're good and they'll be like, why is he not playing, you know? People start asking questions like that and you just have to play, you know? So that's how I like stuck to rugby. And I started playing it, kept on grinding, started training. And uh, the good thing about practice now, we had a meal every end of the practice, you know? So I went there every day, up, showed up to practice really early, like around 10, cause I had nothing to do. And practice was like around three. So I had like time to get the ball, start kicking the balls in the air. I'm like alone on the field, very hot. It's like, you know, dry heat like here in Austin. And um, I just kicked the ball every time, catching it working on my passes. And then when it's like so hard, like around one, I went under the bleachers and then I just took a nap until like around 2.15 or 2.40 or something. When guys were walking in, when I see the first person walk in, I just get up real quick, wipe myself, get on the stands. And I'm like, they, they come in and they're like, hey Monati, what time you got here? I'm like, oh, like five minutes ago. Well, in real sense, I was like so early there, you know? So then when I walked in the field, all my pain went away, you know? Cause I love rugby. I didn't even think of like, what's going on outside. I just wanted to play the game, you know? And I was a fun guy too, making jokes around the field all the time. And uh, they didn't know what's going on with me, you know? So I kept it like that because I really loved it. I really loved it. And uh, being in that rectangular field just helped me a lot. And then after that, at the end, we had like a meal, you know? 
So I loved it. I ate that, and then when I went home, I had my, you know, the one meal a day that I always have. I didn't eat it. Kept it for my siblings so that I can have it in the morning. And then the cycle kept on going on and on like that. So I started traveling the world too. Went to Namibia, South Africa, Dubai, and all the other guys back home were like, damn, when I did these days on the flight and all that. But I was like, yeah, I decided to change my life. You know, I didn't want to be on the streets like that. So my name kept on growing like that each and every day. And then I got to a point whereby I was a regular starter and I got called up to the Kenya Sevens. Um, getting called up to the Kenya Sevens in 2019. And in 2019 is when I met my mom, Susan, who lives here in uh, Virginia. And uh, she like started like helping me out too in like, you know, setting my goals straight and uh, being a man, well-focused and all that. So 2019 was like my best year because I played for the Kenya 15s, got six international cups. And then later that year, I played for the Kenya 7s. And then we were coming down to the USA for um, LA 7s. So we came for the LA 7s 2020 before everything got shut down. I decided to go visit Susan in Virginia. And then everything got shut down, no flights back home, no nothing. So I stayed here for like a whole year without, you know, going home. That's when I decided, okay, I've always wanted to go pro and I have the chance now by staying in America here, you know? So I decided to like start focusing on that. First thing I changed was like my weight because I was like 180. And to go pro, you gotta be heavier than that with the position that I play too, you know? So we went for some Tiger Rugby combines. We like, you know, she got me a gym membership. I had a room to stay in. So grateful for that. And then 2021, I started playing some rugby, some invitational rugby, played with the Hapunas. And uh, we won like three um, tournaments in uh, 2021. And then the New York team, all blue, they want right now. They just emailed me. They're like, do you want to come play in New York? I was like, where do I sign? You know, because I just want to leave Virginia real quick. So got to New York. I got injured last year, October. And I told my patella attendant, which was like so bad. So, and I had like a chance with um, Rugby United in New York, but I couldn't play too because I was injured.